they didn't have much more guidance for me from there other than to start to seek treatment, and I wasn't ready to do that. They referred me to a surgeon, they referred me to uh, uh, a radiation specialist, and I talked to those guys, asked them the same questions. Of course, they recommended treatment. It wasn't until I went to uh, uh, a university medical center uh, and had the opportunity to talk to them about active surveillance that they said, well, of course you can pursue that. And that was the beginning of um, this journey that I've been on ever since, now four and a half years later, five and a half years later. And it was interesting, I, uh, after that, those consultations and those decisions, I went back and I talked to my GP and the uh, urologist, and I, my, my original urologist, my original urologist told me that I would be He'd, he said, I'll see you again in two years. He goes, that's when most guys who go on active surveillance come back and get treatment. That's when they can't take anymore. That's when they, that's when they decide to, to, to get off active surveillance. So at the two-year anniversary, I sent the urologist an email. And I said, this is our two-year anniversary, and I'm still doing just fine. And he was very gracious about it. In fact, he commented uh, to me, and we've had some number of email exchanges. He goes, you know, you've really motivated me, motivated me to eat better, to exercise, to do more for myself, to keep myself healthier, and uh, and so we've had a good rapport ever since. <laughs>